Okay, still with Appendix E, let's go to the second question, okay? The second question starts us off sort of like the first one. It says, here's a market in equilibrium. And there is, again, a price floor at the current equilibrium price. So this is our price floor. Just the way we began before, except now we hear a little bit different information. It says that the price of a complement for R, we were using a substitute in question one. Now we say the price of a complement for good R does what? Falls. This is, by the way, good S. The price of S, a complement for R, falls. What will that do? And by the way, there's another change going on out here that we had before. If at the same time we put a tax on the seller, which is just like it was in question one, we know that this will decrease the supply. We know that complements implies these two goods are related and it's going to affect the demand curve. Now, let's go back. When the price of a complement falls, peanut butter and jelly, two goods you buy and use together, if peanut butter gets really, really cheap, are people going to buy more or less jelly? Well, if peanut butter's cheap, they're going to buy more of it, and they're going to need more jelly to go with it. And we say, well, the demand is going to increase for the other good, jelly, or in this case, good R. So the one thing we have going up here we know is there's going to be an increase in demand, D prime. Equilibrium is going to go from point A to point B. You with me on that so far? Is that allowed? Is the price allowed to rise like that? Yes. This is the floor. It's the minimum price. You can't go below the floor, but you can go above it. You and I can stand above the floor. So in this case, we can go from A to B, which means that the price would rise, and the quantity would do what? The quantity goes from here over to here. There's an increase in quantity, just as there is an increase in price. So there's part of our solution. We know that could be going on. Let's go back over here. We're going to put a tax on the sellers of the goods, so knowing we're going to shift both curves, we draw two graphs. We decrease supply with a tax. Equilibrium goes from C to D. The market price rose. What happened to quantity? The price went from here up to here, so the price rose. The quantity went from here over here. The quantity decreased. And so this is the other half of what's going on. Is the price allowed to rise here with this price floor? Remember this original equilibrium price, this is a price floor. Just says it was there, okay? Is the price allowed to rise? Yeah, no problem. So what's our solution? Our solution is that price is clearly going to rise, and that quantity may fall, it may rise, or if the two forces balance, quantity may be unchanged. So we say the quantity is indeterminate or uncertain or ambiguous. That's it. Now, what role did the price floor play in this whole model here? The answer is none. All of the changes in the market were forcing the price further up. And so the price floor played no role. It was not even relevant to the question. But notice the only change we made from question one, we changed this from We change this from a change in the price of a substitute to a change in the price of a complement. One small change, different answer. If you want to mess with it, you go back and you say, well, let's make this a price ceiling and do the whole analysis again. What do we know about a ceiling? Well, the price can't go above it. And so if there's a ceiling and the price tries to go above it, there's going to be a shortage. Okay? And that's what's going on in Appendix E. We took that very first problem. And as we iterated through number two and number three and number four, we made one small change at a time. And that hopefully allows you to see the different ways to present this stuff and to rehearse and practice 
whatever is thrown at you. All right? Thanks.